The landscapes of our lives are for learning, where experience is our teacher. When we gather together to share our resources, we are destined to love and thrive. Good morning, Pierre. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Maureen. Maureen just told me she's cranky and like, yeah. And I just told her, don't be stupid. You don't have to be like anything. You just can be whoever you are this morning. Both of us had. I don't know. A rough night. We'll just leave it at that because we can't go there. We've got to go forward. <laughs> no, yeah, it involved dogs and and and, and, and sadness. That's right. So we'll leave that there. And stress, and, but so let's us here's a segue, everyone. Okay. <laughs> this the buildup of stress, um, and you know what that does to you subconsciously or uh, beyond conscious awareness. It builds up in your body and. Um, of course, our, our expert that we always turn to when we talk about stress is Andrew Huberman and the Huberman Lab podcast. And, uh, last week Huberman did a podcast on meditation and, uh, which the best part of it for me was that he really kind of talked about what mindfulness is and isn't. And then he explained that, that continuum of interoception and exteroception and the dissociation, which I liked. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. What was your, what was your favorite part? Oh man, you had to ask that. I was listening to it up on my um, headboard as I was drifting in and out of, out of sleep. Um, and I was just, delighted that he was breaking down meditation into different forms that that work i remember he said some work and don't work and and they're used for different things and and kind of depending on the person's needs and yeah uh, so i i must say that a lot of it played when probably i was asleep I <laughs> great <laughs> but but I wanted to talk about meditation because uh you know it's been something I've been doing for a long time and um and getting more into I have a a meditation um mentor meditation mentor and that is our first interview guest Xerxes Whitney um he leads a meditation group on Tuesday nights that I attend and uh it's it's really stellar. I just have to yeah. hear his voice and, you know, it's, it's great. Um, I, yeah. I liked that he talked about the third eye and, and I always just appreciate, I mean, and that's, that's who he is and what his podcast is. It's, it's science-based tools. And so, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of information out there about meditation and the mindfulness thing has exploded in the last, you know, five or 10 years or whatever. And there's also a lot of myths and misunderstandings and what's real and what isn't. And, and yeah. it was really helpful for him to just clarify. Like I always find the neuroscience in just, just plain old interesting because mm -hmm. I, I like to learn about these things in all different ways. Like I've learned about meditation through reading uh, at the Zen center with the Zen priest, you know, and, and learned and done meditation there and that kind of meditation and then yoga. And so like I've done things and read different things, but also I, I, I find the science behind it and the brain science just so I find it interesting. Maybe yeah. people don't need all that and they can just do their thing. But to me, it's just that that extra added knowledge of like, oh, what's actually happening in my body and brain when I'm meditating and what, you know, the difference between yoga nidra and regulation of your body versus the mind focused meditation. And he, he, you know, delineated those things. And I just thought it was interesting. Yeah. We share that, you know, I, I have a passion for understanding you know, like the machine of mm, the mechanistics. You know, yeah. 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 How that works. And that mm. and it frees me to, to go forth, you know, and float out on the lake of a lot more uncertainty and kind of knowing what's going on. Ah, that, that's, I just I want to stop you there. Like that's, 
That's really kind of striking that statement, because I think that's what a lot of people struggle with. Like you just said, like having that understanding in the in the mechanistic information frees you up. You get that kind of not certainty exactly, but more certainty, a little bit more security and stability to then then go out there and take the leap of faith or to learn more of what's uncertain. Right. And that's the balance of ang- that's what anxiety is for a lot of people. So like that, I feel like that's what you just described. I think that's the such the usefulness of learning right uh, yeah yeah well thank you for stopping me there i don't i don't know when i'm throwing out pearls of wisdom <laughs> you that's didn't know that that was going to be that, profound for me <laughs> that's why i need a podcast partner to capture all these things that you know four o'clock in the morning just, yeah you kind of just threw it out there as a, like for you it's no big thing but like that is That's that kind of strikes at the heart of what anxiety really is, is the uncertainty and not knowing versus. Right. Right. No. And, and, and you were, you were spot on with anxiety and uh, yeah, you don't know all, but you know enough to free yourself to experience things and not have to have the brain do all the calculations. Am I doing the right thing? Am I going in the right direction? Is this too far, too much, whatever. And to that point, when I first learned about meditation as a young boy, um, you know, it was this mystical subject. It was impossible to, to read anything that would say anything about it. Like what the, what, 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 what in the world is this? And and then you meditate and you just, like I said, you wonder whether you're doing the right thing, which is <laughs> the opposite of meditation. And, um, and, and along the way, I've done meditation in many different traditions. So um, I've gone to Vipassana, which is a 10 day um, retreat, no speaking, a dietary retreat and then meditating um, for large blocks of time, you know, day and into the evening. Uh, That tradition comes out of Burma and, uh, and it's relatively modern and it was predicted supposedly to be a resurgence. And the interesting thing about Burma being a mountainous country uh, and nobody really wanted to go there, Myanmar for you know, present day people, um, is that it it held on to some of Buddha's teachings in a more pure state. Once Buddha died, um, many different teachers went forth, and 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 you know they basically they basically put their own spin on it, and um, and it evolved in many different ways and in many different places Mm -hmm. the interesting thing is too i as i understand the history in india because there were so many different interpretations of this it it kind of dissipated in some ways whereas in like japan and china and burma and other places it kind of got distilled into like one branch that remained a little bit stronger than the many branches that that evolved like the lineages like the my, lineages. Yeah, my hut yeah. yana or whatever it is and then the different and then zen yeah yeah but so coming back to meditation um there's a western uh thing called the uh which i went through courses uh, the school of practical philosophy And it kind of merges meditation with some of the Greek philosophers, um, ultimately to hook up to, um, you know, transcendental meditation, essentially. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was what was nice about them is they they started you with the idea that any sense that you have, any of the five senses, a focus on the five senses is the beginning. Uh, like step in meditation because 
your senses are in the present moment. And if you are experiencing what you're smelling or what you're hearing, you are in the present moment. And if you can maintain that, and I thought it was just like the, the title of the school, I thought it was so practical and so non-mystical. And it gave me that tool to hold on to. Whereas before it was like, close your eyes and breathe. Well, it's and like you're just paying attention to your sensory perception, your right. sensory experiences. Like Alan Watts's video, there's a video that I have on my website and part of my self-awareness course about how to get to know your mind and body. And he says, let the ears hear. It's just a meditation. Let the ears hear, you know, let the nose smell. Just, just that, that, like you said, the first thing is to like pay attention to in, in, in that form of meditation that he was talking about is what, what you're saying, paying That's attention right. to the attention. It's turning your attention and aware and co conscious awareness to what your body's already doing. So it's just more, and, and that's what Andrew Huberman was talking about, wasn't he? Right. Partially. Right. Yeah. And you know, the other, the other um, entree into meditation is the breath. Um, and that's also in the present tense, but the breath and mind in my experience, tend to hook up in in some sort of jobish way, like enterprise. Like, well, the mind's starting to think about what the breath should be doing, and um, and there's all different kinds of breathing patterns. So, so it it kind of brings you into the present tense, but but it doesn't doesn't immediately set the mind at ease but i wanted to uh but didn't he say that that's the whole like like and i've heard this before the set the mind at ease like that's not really it's he talked about when you okay for instance what you just said when the mind when the thinking part of you i don't want to say mind the thinking part of you starts right. to think about your breath and starts to measure it and calculate it or think about it instead of just attending to it right, right. with not like non-doing just like right. oh i feel the breath on the top of my lip i know that's the thing in vipassana or whatever yes it is when when the when the thinking part starts thinking that's when you know that's when you notice that's the ability to dissociate in a healthy way from then no it's the metacognition right it's the meta piece of oh thinking brain is th like thinking. And I know in a lot of traditions, people say to like teachers, meditation teachers say to like thinking, you know, label like thinking that like, that's what's happening right now. Um, and Huberman was saying, and part of what he was talking about, and this is only part of it was that when the mind does start to think and you notice it's, it's the bringing back Thing. And because he said, I was always taught like, oh, you're supposed to like the mind is supposed to relax and thinking supposed to calm. And although it's still happening, you're not attaching to it. But the leaning back in, it's the going back, isn't it? It's the going. It's like, OK, refocus on the breath on the top of your lip. Just thinking right. that's happening. And then your mind wanders and goes back. And he talked a lot about mind wandering you know, as slash oh. dissociation, form of dissociation is mind wandering or whatever, but that that was the whole, not the whole point, but the, the point what's happening in meditation is that the mind wanders and goes, we bring it back. We bring That's it back. Correct. That's correct. And that you can think of it as, you know, herding cats or corralling, you know, <laughs> wild horses or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. However, your mind is set up, but it is a it is a process that you that you go through, and uh, and a it's a gentle, practice, it's, yeah, a practice, yeah. It's a gentle one, you know. You just you just observe, and then you try and you try and go back. So you're right. It's not just like oh, you know, you're freeing yourself of thinking mind. It's it's a uh, and then and then and once you once that done, it just kind of goes down that path no it's always it's always coming back but i wanted to just mention the three kinds of wisdom in the vipassana tradition vipassana can, um 
Can I make yeah. a small comment about that before you go? Oh, there? sure, sure, sure. Do you mind? <laughs> no. Um, I think the value of that podcast and him describing that, and he's not the only one who has, but whatever, that's what we yeah. listen to. Um, yeah. I think the real value there is part of, you know, embarking on a meditation practice, if that's your, if you have that desire, is you have to understand what it is you are doing and, and, and that pre like your whole like um, attitude towards it and your, your preconceptions about it really do influence it. Right. So, so trying to understand what it is that you are doing is probably important for setting your intention with it. And because I think this is what a lot of people struggle with. They're like, I can't, I, because they have the perception that meditation is, Oh, I'm going to slow my mind down my thoughts are going to calm and I'm not going to get, you know, I'm not going to get entangled with them. And so I'm going to feel calmer and like, I might get enlightened or I'm going to feel know. better somehow mm -hmm. that they set themselves up for that expectation. And then when that doesn't happen, a lot of times it's self-blame. It's like, what's wrong with me? Why can't I do it? Or, or, and it's really just a misunderstanding of what meditation is, which is why I think it's so great that he did that podcasts and and that meditation teachers teach people what it is but i think in the general populace because i've talked to a lot of people who are like oh i i've tried meditation it doesn't it doesn't work for me that I kind love, of oh wait 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 i'm gonna stop you <laughs> that is the greatest line i've ever heard oh i've tried meditation it doesn't work um that is just absolutely the greatest um, well, that's outcomes focused. Like I tried, what's that? It's well, like I think I part of that is outcomes. Like I didn't get the outcome I wanted, which is meditation's a process. It's not for it's outcomes. So, so the same thing. You know, I tried yoga and it doesn't work. You know, so it, it's amazing to me because <laughs> both of those things are practices, and the working part of it is nothing that you really. Uh, uh, I'm trying to say this the right way. You know, you you talked about outcome based. It's it's not something that you achieve and you're like, but it works. <laughs> it just it just has its own its own program basically. And uh, the more you practice it, you'll look back and your life will be. I I will speak for myself. I look back and my life is changed in very dramatic ways. Well, yeah. this is a, kind of a long podcast and I just wanted to cover, you know, Andrew Huberman and the fact that he took on this subject is kind of like when we did our first practice word, which was Zen. And so we actually talked about this word and, mm -hmm. and him as a scientist Big to subject. just jump into meditation and start to deconstruct it from a scientific uh that you know the guy's amazing so well we i mean it. his i mean his lab studies it and the guys that he works with david spiegel like this is not like he didn't just jump in and say oh i'll pick the topic of my like that's what no. he works in the stress piece that he works on and the brain and all that i know you know that but the only other thing i wanted to mention before we close um yeah is the leaning in part that he talked about and maybe you were asleep <laughs> i'm learning about the podcast so just go yeah yeah, yeah. There, there so it's that what i was talking about earlier about like the coming back and and he mentioned sam um oh god sam harris and his app and his meditation app and he wasn't promoting it but he was like this is what i use and he wanted to have sam harris on the podcast or whatever but it's that it's that coming back um, process, which is which is leaning into, and he was talking about this like as this is exactly what people need to to learn about meditation in themselves is if you he was saying if you are more interoceptive aware person and we can talk about inter we could have a whole podcast on interoception we will but like yeah. if you're more interoceptive 
maybe you need to, maybe you, that person needs to do the more difficult or unnatural feeling thing is to focus externally, you know, with extra X, you know, move more towards the extra receptive realm because there's friction there, which is the leaning into that. And that is, that is the point. Like, that's what you need. You need, you you need to do kind of like the opposite end of the spectrum from where you are sometimes. And then other times, you know, you can, you can do a more inward focused meditation. So, so I thought that was interesting too, because that's also another thing when I'm, you know, working with clients, it's like, okay, you know, trying to help somebody learn to sleep, you know, and, and there's, there's fear associated with going to sleep. And so there's arousal and adrenaline, you know, when a person goes to sleep, if you can imagine that, and it's hard and then recommending a resource for that person, like, okay, how, how can we help you find something that will help you relax so that you allow sleep to come. It's not, so it's not achievement based. Like I'm going to make myself go to sleep, right? It's the opposite. So, so, so that person has to find maybe, maybe it's soft music. Maybe it's music with no lyrics. Maybe it's a yoga nidra. Maybe it is a meditation that's they're focused outside with their eyes open, or maybe it's a a meditation where they have their eyes closed. Like it depends on the person, right? Mm. It's so, so specific. So I can't just say like, oh, well just do that. And that will help you relax. No, I did get that from the uh, Huberman podcast, which is that, um, you know, people operate in different ways and how they're set up, uh, you know, does determine how these things work and it's interesting too this podcast and uh, i'll try and wrap this up for folks it's interesting uh this podcast phenomena right if you were to have to write that in a book that human podcast mm. would be a mess it, you know because you'd be starting to say oh well people are different and they're different in these variety of ways and then there are these uh ways that you need to address if you're a person a b c d the permutations would get messy yeah permutations and we just did that um in you know 60 seconds for people and andrew huberman did it and i think this is one of the issues in teaching and in learning about some of these more traditional or mystical paths that uh you know typically they're you find your mentor and you just kind of follow that person to an understanding. And sometimes that mentor is very quiet. Uh, and, you know, you, you think maybe you're not learning so much, but the point is it's, it's confusing for different people and they have to find different paths. And I think Huberman did a great service in, demystifying um you know how these how these things really scientifically work and that they're not the same for everybody so yeah and hasn't that been the theme through all of his pot like he's always reminding people of that like it's unique there's exceptions to everything even the same person during the same part of the day a different part of the day is going to have different needs you have different needs at 3 p.m than you do at 8 a.m. because you have more adrenaline and blah, 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 right? Like, Uh, yeah, I think, I think it comes from his science, you know, um, foundation where, you know, he doesn't want to, he's, he's, you know, he's, he's a scientist. He's curious. He's trying to understand. He's open to different things. He's not, He's not laying out a prescription for people and he's ultra conscious of it in his public forum. Um, uh, But the benefit of that, not, but the benefit of that is that it also matches up with reality. This is the way the world actually works. I'm not the same person right now that I was, you know, two days ago. Well, having water falling from my eyes, like about, you know, 25 minutes ago so um you know let's wrap that up and um jump into 
uh, maybe a learning practice or, or something like that. Well, but yeah, next podcast, I want to talk about what you just brought up then. If you're not going to let me go on, we'll do it in the next podcast about that. I The prescriptive piece, you know, I think that's another thing that people have expectations of like, I want a prescription that will help me do X. Just tell me what to do and I'll follow the rules. Let's and, do that. Let's do that. How much controversy comes from. Let's do that. Let's do that in two minutes. No, we can't. Oh, oh, you mean oh, oh not, in, not capture it all in two minutes, in two minutes no. now. <laughs> no, two minutes. Yeah. I had to stop. I had to stop somewhere. So this is our morning podcast. Um, we're trying to develop a regular schedule around it and releases. So thanks for, thanks for joining us, whoever you are. We have, we have a regular release schedule. Well, we do. <laughs> this is uh, this is Pierre from Yoga Heels. Peace through grace, friends. Peace through grace. And Maureen from Landscapes for Learning. Learn to live and live to learn. You're supposed to end on peace through grace. I know. I knew I was flipping <laughs> the tables on you. So anyway, thanks. Okay, bye. Friends. Bye. <laughs>